I feel like crispering myself with dog jeans. What could go wrong? Here we go. Hello world, it's Siraj. And the promises of synthetic biology are too hard to ignore. It's currently the topic that excites me the most. So I've compiled a study guide for myself to learn using various free online resources. In this video, I'd like to share my study guide with you so you can join me on my learning journey. When I spent several months traveling through India, I experienced such incredible beauty, but I also saw some immense problems firsthand, namely pollution, poverty, and a lack of quality healthcare. At the time, I was certain that the way to solve those problems was to accelerate the development of AI by disseminating knowledge to as many people as possible. Now, however, I realize that the way to solve them is not, just, is not just to focus on creating better statistical algorithms, aka AI. It's to create better biological systems, and AI is a tool to help with that. Synthetic biology will have profound impacts in medicine, agriculture, energy, and manufacturing. Imagine a world where independent developers, not just big companies, can design intelligent molecular robots that deliver drugs and antidotes. They can design crops that create yields that are 100x more abundant than usual, new types of biofuels that produce zero emissions, new types of houses that grow and repair themselves. To get there, we'll need to further understand the oldest programming language on Earth, DNA. DNA is a molecule that defines the instruction set for a given organism. There are thousands of traits you have that can be traced back to your DNA, from an aversion to cilantro to the ability to twerk yo Buddha. All right, let's cut to the chase here. The first step in my study plan is to follow the most important people in this field. Who are they? I found that the best way to find them is to follow everyone that the J. Craig Venter Institute follows on Twitter. Craig Venter is one of the fathers of synthetic biology. He led the first draft sequence of the human genome and built the first team to create the world's first synthetic organism. His nonprofit is incentivized to stay up to date with advances in the field, and their following list shows it. Now it's time to start studying theory, specifically pure biology. MIT's intro to biology feels like the best first step here. These video lectures are by Professor Eric Lander, a principal leader of the Human Genome Project. And this course is pretty expansive, covering biochemistry, genetics, molecular biology, and cell biology together. Unfortunately, the reading assignments are based on a book that is no longer available, WTF Mate. But a great alternative is called the Online Biology Book by Estrella Mountain Community College in Arizona. For this material, I find it essential to dive into the readings, not just glaze over them, since biology is totally out of my wheelhouse. But that's also what makes learning it so exciting. The quizzes are also definitely worth checking out. They've got some great illustrations. Since biology is the highest level concept here, I thought it would be important to start with that and develop a broad sense of what all of its subtopics are and how they fit together. Biological organisms are a result of chains of chemical reactions occurring within them that direct activity. And the study of this biochemistry is the next topic to learn about. Oregon State University has a free biochemistry course that includes a mind-boggling 52 video lectures and a related free textbook called Biochemistry Free and Easy. The video lectures have rave reviews on iTunes, but I think this related book is the real gem. I am in love with these colored illustrations. Clearly, there will be some overlap between this course and the previous, but overall, it's worth it. So we're building our tree of knowledge one step at a time. We've learned about broad concepts in biology and biochemistry. Now let's go even deeper on to a specific relevant subtopic, genetics. Genetics is the study of genes, which are made up of DNA, the building blocks of life. Since the last two courses discussed some basic concepts of genetics already, for the third module, we're gonna read a book titled She Has Her Mother's Laugh. The reason being, it's very highly reviewed, and although it's not super technical, as one reviewer puts it, she explains concepts in very simple words interspersed with human stories. 
The book also gives some background into CRISPR, the popular cut and paste tool for DNA that makes genetic modification much easier than ever before. Stretch my hands to you. Knife flight, CRISPR is so knife flight, trying to snip a gene right. Using my puppet has me feeling so Christ like, watching for bacterial growth on my plate, right? Okay, now that we're halfway through the study guide, it's time for a midterm project. Most learning happens by actively doing, not just taking in information, and that's why the midterm is important. The goal is to learn how to read DNA. I found a really well-documented project on GitHub by Laura R. Johns, great work, where he downloaded his DNA from 23andMe, then turned it into a pandas data frame, visualizing some of the numbers beautifully. He then pulled data from SNpedia, a wiki that maps genes, to traits. Once pulled and merged, he used Selenium to scrape the abstracts of papers related to each of his genes to learn more. This is such a brilliant idea and a cool project to get started with epic work Lorar. Go ahead and browse through his Jupyter Notebook, and then either use your own genome or find a genome online and do the same thing. Visualizing and analyzing a DNA dataset will start to give you ideas for future projects you could do. Avoid engineering zombie outbreak viruses, though. So clearly, biology is cool, but you know what's cooler than just understanding biology? Engineering biology. This is synthetic biology, the field of science that focuses on designing new biological systems. Think a new species, a new type of medicine, a new fuel source. The possibilities are truly only limited by your imagination. This, to me, is the most exciting topic in technology right now because of how the cost of computing and the cost of sequencing DNA have dropped dramatically the past few years. It makes it possible for more people who aren't experts to start experimenting. This free course titled Synthetic Biology 1 is perfect for this. There are three parts, a module on making yogurt using standard biology lab tools, creating your first genetically modified organism, and creating bacterial paint. There's also this fun little game called Hero Coli that helps teach some basic synthetic biology concepts that you can play in your browser. I love how they went the extra mile to make this. I wish more courses had interactive learning games like this. Now, you probably won't have the equipment to do this at home, but just watching the process will be useful. I've also included two books in this module, Regenesis by legendary genetics pioneer George Church and BioBuilder by Natalie Koldell, an MIT professor. BioBuilder is what keeps getting recommended by people in the synthetic biology subreddit as a great source of instructional information. Also, I just had to include this. This is the first time I've ever seen anything like this. Three MIT researchers compiled a YouTube playlist of relevant synthetic biology videos, then wrote a scientific paper about that playlist. Achievement unlocked. The last thing I've included in this module is a list of possible genetic modifications. To some, this might seem like a page full of technical jargon, but when I look at this, I see the human source code. These traits define us, and we can theoretically add or remove any of these with modern tools. And speaking of those tools, what are they? That's what Module 5 is dedicated towards, software tools that allow us to begin to explore and modify genes. The first tool I came across was Cello, written in a mixture of Python and Java that allows a developer to design a circuit in DNA. Normally, electrical engineers design hardware circuits programmatically, and the developers behind Cello applied that same concept to biological systems. I learned about Cello after watching a series of videos by this iBiology team, and I really like them, especially the ones by the project lead, Chris Voigt. Another big library here is BioPython. It's a Python library dedicated to bioinformatics that allows you to modify gene sequences in a million different ways. And it's even got a bunch of machine learning techniques like logistic regression built into it, which allows you to predict different features for each gene. Looking through the documentation, it's a well-maintained and highly feature-rich library, so definitely start playing with it. Also, one of the biggest contributors to synthetic biology software on GitHub is the Edinburgh Gen Genome Foundry. They've got tools for designing and building genetic systems, like at least 15 different libraries. Don't expect to understand them all, I don't. Just keep the list handy for when the time comes. And the last tool to explore is CAD Nano. 
It's a tool that helps you design structures in DNA. Basically, you can turn a CAD file into an associated DNA-based structure. Think molecular robots that deliver a drug at a specific time to detect certain things and respond accordingly. And now for the last module, actually building synthetic biology. Since not everyone has a wet lab sitting at home, I found a virtual lab that's incredibly fun called Labster. Labster has a lab in the cloud that you can use via a web browser or a VR headset and experience designing your first synthetic organism. You just have to apply and they'll send you a demo. If you want access to a real lab, go to diybio.org local and search for ones near you. You can also buy synthetic biology kits online from places like the Odin. For the final project, pick an existing project from the iGEM competition to not just read, but write DNA. iGEM stands for International Genetically Engineered Machine Competition, and it's where teams from all over the world try their best to design biological systems that perform useful applications and are then judged on their results. Some of these teams came up with incredibly creative solutions from acne cures based on bacteria to fluorescence emitting devices that help mine gold. I challenge you to complete this study guide by pledging to do so on social media using the hashtag molecular dharma. That means going through all the resources and completing the two associated projects, one to read DNA and one to write DNA. I'll pick one pledge randomly and give them a shout out next month. Good luck and thanks for watching.